everyone and welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast, which is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my journey as a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. I'm Farman and you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl and my website is also newleafdesigns.nl. Today I have a really fun episode for you because I have a new yarn that I can show you a new pattern and also a new masterclass. So lots of new things. Uh, so I'm excited to dig right in. It's been a month since my last podcast episode, so I'm really excited to be back. Uh, do let me know in a comment how you're doing. Uh, please do subscribe if you like my videos. I also have a lot of tutorial videos on this same channel. So if you're not into chatty things, but you are into knitting and crochet stuff, then you might want to check out those. And as I said, I have a new yarn to show you. Scapias have just launched their new yarn range today, which is called Scapies Downtown. And it's a self-striping yarn. So Scapies Downtown. And I have most of the colors here, actually, so I can show you what they look like. Um, I think there are 16 colors in total. I don't know. I don't have all of them, but um, they are so beautiful. And the name Downtown um, is, I think, inspired by uh, another yarn that they have called Metropolis. And if you follow me, you know that I love Escape Piece Metropolis. It's, I think it's my favorite yarn. Um, it's 75% uh, ni uh, nylon, 75% merino, 25% nylon, same content as this yarn. Uh, and both yarns are 200 meters per 50 grams. Um, so, that yarn is called Metropolis. This is the sister yarn called Downtown. Metropolis is a solid color yarn and Downtown is a self-striping yarn. And I think each colorway has five or six stripes. Um, I think it might be six colors, but don't quote me on that. So I have all these yarns here already and it just launched today so I was very happy to receive some of these yarns and try them out before they launched and I also designed a pattern with these so um, I have lots of plans but <laughs> one pattern at a time it's just self-striping yarn is like such a dream for sock knitters and I mean you, you can make loads of stuff with with this yarn because it is so soft um, like I t <laughs> like I just can't describe how, so how soft it is um, and as Hapius was explaining it to me and that is a that it's a sister yarn to Metropolis and I thought okay cool I have worked a lot with Metropolis but it is it is way softer than Metropolis and Metropolis is already um, is already a very soft sock yarn and as I was saying you can make a lot of stuff with uh, with this yarn um, but I'm a sock knitter at heart and self-striping yarn to me screams socks. So of course, what was my first pattern? A sock pattern, yay! And uh, because self-striping yarn works great for afterthought heels, I have designed a sock pattern with an afterthought heel and you can see it right here, the City Stripe Socks. And I've used this colorway. <laughs> I just have this little bit left from two balls um, and this is colorway 400 um, called After Dark. And I love the yellow and the mustard in there and the teal green. And this actually matches my couch, which you can see in this picture. Um, and the yellow matches my cushions. <laughs> Yeah, so I just I saw this colorway and I thought okay I have to make a pair of socks for this for my boyfriend and uh, I finished it sometime in February and he has been wearing it or wearing them almost every day so please excuse the already um, <laughs> there are some signs of wear on the socks some signs of pilling and felting uh, but yeah he's just been wearing them 
almost every day. So yeah, he's a very knitworthy person uh, and possibly even more knitworthy now that he has started a pair of socks for me. He is knitting for me. Um, anyway, so these are the City Stripe socks. And so these are in size, uh, European size 46, 47. So they are quite big and um, uh, still from two 50 gram balls, I have this left. I, I don't, I haven't measured how much it is, but I think even for a small shoe size, I think you need two balls because um, I have quite small feet. And when I knit a pair for myself, I use about 60 grams. Um, uh, or 60, 70 grams. Uh, so you need at least two balls and then uh, two balls will also be enough for the largest size. So um, yeah, so you need two balls anyway. Uh, but aren't they cute? And you can see the afterthought heels. <laughs> I'm so glad I took pictures of this because the heels are uh, the most... <laughs> Like, not not felted, but um, they have the most wear and tear, so I won't show them too closely. But uh, you can see the kind of bullseye effect. Um, let's see if, yeah, like that. It kind of looks like the toe. Oh, it's the exact same colors. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so um, I loved making these and for once I made them perfectly matching. So usually with self-striping yarns, I'm not too fussed about it, um, but with these I thought might as well. So, um, so I made them perfectly matching and I'm quite happy with that. And yeah, they're, they're a perfect fit. Um, so I'm very pleased with that as well, and yeah, I just, I just love them. <laughs> so these are the City Stripe socks. You can get the pattern for free on my blog, newleafdesigns.nl. Um, I'm also uploading the paid PDF patterns to my Ravelry shop and my New Leaf web shop. The free pattern on the blog, it is in both English and in Dutch. So you'll have an English bit and then you have the same bit in Dutch. And if you'd rather have a more compact version uh, without all the pictures in there and just separate per language, then I really recommend the PDF because I create them uh, for English and then for Dutch separately and they are ad free. So uh, yeah, it just makes it more compact and uh, printer friendly as well. So um, so if you like that, then please head over to my shop and then you can buy the pattern for the afterthought heel. Um, if you get the pattern, there's also a link in there for a photo tutorial so that if you're viewing the pattern on your phone or maybe you've printed it out, then you can uh, just um, go to the photo tutorial separately because I don't think that you want to print out all of those photos. Um, yeah, so you have all of the options and um, yeah, I was just really excited to create this and I have loads more ideas. Uh, there are several more patterns uh, with this yarn in the making and uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just super excited. So let's uh, go through the uh, colorways that I have here. Um, so the one that I used is 400 After Dark, which is this one. Then this one is called Gallery Central and it's 411 and it has very, very bright colors, almost like a carnival. Um, it has orange, um, green, purple, blue, pink and yellow, so a lot of colors. Then this one, purple and green, is called Morning Mist 402. And it has one, two, three, four shades of purple and two shades of um, green. Then this one is called Leafy Suburb 403 and it is mostly um, shades of green. It's really, really beautiful and this one would be great for color work as well um, because it's mostly uh, one shade so, you, so it's easy to find a contrast color. 
Um, this one, Lakeside 411, is blues and greens. Really, really beautiful. And on all of these, the stripes will show up as solid stripes. I'll actually put in a picture right here of all of the colorways. Um, and then you can see that uh, they are all solid stripes. Uh, so sometimes on the ball, uh, it seems as if, you know, uh, a stripe is first you know, a wider bit and then a narrow bit, a narrow bit, but that is just how the ball is wound. So, uh, it, they will all be solid color stripes. So this is South Hill 406. Lovely blues and purples. And then this is one of my favorites. This is Baker's Corner and, um, it's number 413 and it's just beautiful pastels and this will also be great for color work because it is uh, mostly very light colors so you can very easily pair it with a darker color um, and I think this one would look really cute for lace knitting as well uh, because it just has that kind of dainty feel to it uh, that would really be complemented by lace patterns then Momo Momo wants my attention, but not for cuddling. <laughs> then this one, and my boyfriend is most excited about this one because it looks like his KTM uh, motorbike. Uh, it is called Industrial Terrain 404. And yeah, it is uh, oranges and uh, grays. So yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful colorway. Then City Shopper 409, which has browns and blues and red, purple, green, lots of colors. And also, almost all of these are quite dark. So um, if you want to do color work, you can pair these with, or you can pair this one with a lighter shade. And that would work really nicely. Then, this is also one of my favorites, Museum Square 412. Uh, it's just, you know, basically my wall. Um, it has lots of pastel, it has some beige, um, some light blue, light purple, and then a kind of strawberry pink and a darker blue. It's really beautiful. Um, and yeah, this is also one of the first that I cast on with. So I'm really excited to be showing you that pattern, uh, when it's ready. Uh, then a all gray one, which is called Sidewalk 414. So really appropriate name, Sidewalk. And although this might not look really exciting in the skein, um, this will just look really beautiful and classy, um, when you knit it up. And then similarly, we have one with um, kinds of sandy and brown shades, which is called Financial District. And it reminds me of a kind of Burberry print. And I think it would look really great if you paired this with uh, yellow or red uh, or even blue. Like you, you can pair this with a lot of colors. Um, for example, if you were going to do you know, I'm always thinking about socks, so uh, I would be thinking of this as the main color and then uh, for solid colors for the toes and heels. Uh, but this would also look great as a hat or scarf, um, leg warmers or sleeves of a sweater. You know, there's lots of ideas for self-striping yarn. And then this one is very, very vibrant. This is called Sunset, which is 401. Beautiful warm shades, orange, uh, different shades of red and purple. And yeah, that is just really, really beautiful. So soft. You have to feel this for yourself. Um, and then this one, I love this one as well. Uh, this one is called Street Lights. 
again, very appropriate, uh, 405 different shades of gray and yellow. And then two more, I think I'm missing two colors, just so you know. Uh, this is River Walk, which is all kinds of blue. This might actually be really fun to pair with this one. So you have all cool tones and then all warm tones. That would be really cute. So that's Sunset and River Walk. And then the last one that I have is uh, East Avenue, which is 416, and it is uh, green uh, with different shades of red and pink. And I think the green may have multiple stripes in this one, but I'm not too sure as, you, as I can't really tell it from the ball, but um, uh, the picture that I put up on the screen a couple minutes back. I think you will be able to see a finished sock with this uh, colorway. And also, if you're um, if you want to see the different stripe sequences on the Facebook page and also on their Instagram, Scapius have posted a video where. Um, where you see the colorways one by one, and then also um, they have wrapped the yarn around, I don't know, some glass plate or something, and then you can see how the striping sequence looks. So yes, it's just a really, really beautiful yarn, and um, I hope to see lots of projects being made with this, because it is just so great to have a new um, commercial self-striping yarn. Oops in town um, because self-striping yarn is just so much fun to knit with um, but up until now it has been really um, difficult to get your hands on some budget-friendly self-striping yarn um, you know in Europe I mean in uh, in America I think there have been options but here in Europe, it has been mostly indie dyers who have done this uh, self-striping yarn. And by that, I mean self-striping yarn with solid stripes because, I, you know, I love self-patterning yarns. But, you know, the really solid stripes, um, I think, are a must-have in your yarn stash. Uh, so I'm really, really happy that Scapius now have this downtown yarn so you don't have to buy indie dyed yarn to get some self-striping yarn into your stash. So I'm really happy that, uh, you know, escapees are just thinking for every budget here. So yes, that was all very, very exciting. Please do go over to my blog to see the City Stripes pattern and perhaps get the PDF while you're at it. And uh, I'm very, uh, yeah, just very excited to show you the other patterns I have been working on, but you'll need to wait a little while for those. Uh, and then another new thing that I have published this week or that has started this week is the Darn It Masterclass. So, um, on my Patreon page, I now have a Darn It Masterclass where you can learn how to mend or how to darn your knitwear or uh, other fabrics. It doesn't have to be knitting. The first chapter has just gone live on Tuesday of this week, so that was April 27th, and there will be a new chapter coming out on each Tuesday. Um, and past Tuesday, so chapter one was on duplicate stitch. And if you use duplicate stitch for darning, it's also called Swiss darning. Um, and I will teach you how to mend holes with duplicate stitch. And uh, if you pick the same color, it can look very much invisible, although I like to do it visibly. Um, so I've mended some of my socks that way. And it's just a lot of fun mending socks. And next week, we'll, we will be looking into a new technique, which, all, which I call the knitted technique. Um, and here is a knitted patch. Uh, and then in the third chapter, we will look at weaving. 
and for all of my mending I use Escapius Metropolis, so the sister yarn of downtown, uh, because um, a yarn with nylon content is for me the safest option for mending, because the nylon makes it strong so it makes it more durable. Uh, but of course if you're, uh, if you're going to mend a cotton thing, so for example uh, a dress or something, um, then maybe you want to use cotton instead of uh, merino and nylon but um, yeah I, I have a lot of wool things and especially socks and if I want to mend socks I, al I also want to use my favorite sock yarn to darn them and that is Hippies Metropolis um, and here you can see I've also mended a little bit of the ribbing as well and this is also the technique that we'll be learning in chapter two um, and then, so I've also uh, dug out an old swatch, so I, <laughs> I knit this uh, years ago. It, I meant for it to be a scarf, but then um, it didn't happen. Uh, long story short, and this uh, this was actually made in Scapius Secret Garden, which is actually a lovely yarn. But um, I've just used this uh, would be scarf as a large swatch for my uh, darning practice. So here is another weaving patch for chapter three, and then on the other side <laughs> is my now favorite patch, um, which is these, this crochet flower patch, and I just love it so much. Um, and this will be covered in chapter four, so you will learn how to close up a hole with crochet and how then to embellish it um, with crochet and embroidery techniques and I'm just super super happy with this so this is the first time that I tried that and then um, I did it again for this swatch and this is actually <laughs> so this was a swatch uh, but it turns out that it fits perfectly around this uh, plant pot that now houses my avocado plant um, yeah, my avocado plant um, <laughs> was ill last uh, last year, so uh, yeah, he had some bugs, so all of his leaves fell off. And then now he is growing some new leaves. <gasps> new leaf! <laughs> uh, so I hope that they survive. Some of them are all are already dropping off, but I think that's because he's just producing a lot of leaves so I think he cannot keep up with production anyway so um, it's about the swatch that I want to tell you so um, so here is the bit that I did on the video that I recorded for the master class um, so again it's it's basically the same I replicated this um, so we make a crochet circle and then embellish it to look like a flower. And there was a, another hole here and I covered that up with a leaf. And I think it came out very, very cute and I'm just super happy with it. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just very, very chuffed with this because it looks great. So if you want to learn how to do this, uh, how to uh, mend holes with crochet um, or any of the other techniques that I've shown you, or just embellish things that aren't damaged with a crochet patch like this, because that's also fun, uh, then do go over to my Patreon page and sign up. The um, the masterclass is available for Rosewood, Willow, and Elder Tier patrons. So that is, uh, Rosewood is 5 euros a month, Willow is 8 euros a month, and then Elder is 10 euros a month. And you get different benefits at each level. But for Rosewood, you at least get access to the tutorial videos, including the Darn It Masterclass and many more. Uh, at the Willow tier you also get access to several uh, PDF patterns that are otherwise paid for in my shop and um, at the Elder tier you get access to both of those and also some extra uh, behind the scenes videos and a kind of more designer, um, designer point of view videos. So 
For example, I now have a designer talk series where I talk about uh, how to price your products, um, if there is even money in the craft industry, uh, you know, kind of these topics that's, uh, that small business owners come across, uh, especially in the craft branch because we are constantly being undervalued and yeah, it can be a little bit demotivating. So, um, so I started recording these uh, designer talk videos and the feedback has been amazing so far so I'm really really happy um, so yes that's also what you get if you subscribe at the elder tier level so if you want to be a part of this then do head over to my patreon page and you can choose which tier um, excites you most all right, that was all of the knitting that I'm going to show you today. I just have another small section on plants. So if you want to stick around and chat about leafy things, then please be welcome. <laughs> so this podcast is actually, uh, I record it every two weeks, except two weeks ago when I didn't have a podcast. And, um, you know, for reasons that I might get into at some point. Um, I wasn't feeling too great, but um, hey-ho. Uh, and in that week, I also uh, went to a garden center with my mom and I got a lot of new plants and uh, I'll see if I can put some footage in here. Um, I just really needed a pick-me-up and uh, plants just always do that for me. And since, uh, you know, if you were around when I was talking about the avocado plant, uh, lots of my plants had a bug infection. Uh, and yeah, the bugs just basically killed most of my plants. And as a plant lady, that left me feeling very sad. Uh, because yeah, plants just always, it's, it's really, um, you know, I know it's not weird. I know plants have that effect on us, but uh, just going from having a living room full of plants to having almost zero plants just uh, really had an impact on my mood, uh, amongst other things. It was not just the plants, but anyway, um, after I was mostly sure that all of the bugs were gone because we just threw all of the infested plants away with pain in my heart. I had uh, I had tried for several months to um, to save those plants, uh, you know, rinsing all of the um, um, the soil off. Is, is that what you call it? The soil? I think so. But soil is like also <laughs> and then putting the plants in just water for a couple days and then, um, you know, um, giving them new soil because the the bugs that I had um, um, they are mostly in the in the ground in the soil of the plant uh, but then turns out that the soil that I bought had the bugs so uh, I had to just throw them all away um, yeah but, you know, joke's on me because um, the soil that I had, I bought it from the supermarket and not from the garden center. And I know that the soil at the garden center might also not be perfect. It might also be infected. But, um, yeah, this was the only time that I had bought soil from the uh, supermarket and, boom, infested. So, ah, yes. So, finally, two weeks ago, after months and months and months of having just almost zero plants in the living room. I went to the garden center with my mom and we bought a ton of plants. Yeah, and we finally got a Monstera again. Um, yeah, we've had a Monstera for years and um, then we gave ours away um, when we got Momo because we knew that a Monstera was um, you know, toxic to cats, uh, but then we got Momo, and, um, turns out that she doesn't think plants are interesting at all. Um, so then we thought it was safe to get a Monstera again, and then bug life happened. So, yeah. So now we finally have a Monstera again, and, you know, after two weeks now, not a bug in sight, so that's good. Um, and I, I, I also got a lot of pilea, so the, uh, the Chinese money plant or the pancake plant, whatever you want to call it, 
I love them. Um, ever since I saw a picture on uh, Arona's uh, Instagram, also uh, she's Buku on Instagram, uh, she has a shelf unit just full of Pilea and it just... <laughs> I'll see if I can find it actually because you have to see this. Alright, so here it is. Can you see that? Ah, oh, I just, I, I, I want this. I mean, they, they are so tall. Um, I just, yes, I want this. <laughs> so I bought a lot of Pilea. Um, actually, I bought two big ones and then I separated those. And uh, I got another hanging plant. I have one right there. And that one is doing pretty good. So I thought, okay, I can take care of that one. So uh, I got another one like that. And yes, all is well. And um, another exciting plant that I have grown myself from a mango seed. Um, yes, I have gotten a mango seed and it is now sprouting. So that is really, really um, interesting. I haven't been able to grow a uh, mango plant before, um, so fingers crossed I um, succeed this time. Let me see if I can walk you through this. So if you have the mango and then you cut off all of the fruit bit uh, and then you have this pod uh, and then very gently with your um, with your finger or with your nails, um, not with a knife, you feel where there's a crack and then you try to open it. And then this seed is inside. Um, and then, and then, um, so I have this book that has an instruction manual for each type of fruit seed and how to grow it into a plant. It's a book uh, published in 1977 and um, yeah, <laughs> my grandfather had it um, and yeah my mom gave it to me the other day and I was like hey this is cool so uh, the book says to uh, put the mango seed in warm water so kind of like you know tepid water in a small bowl and then you know I put it in the Sun and then um, give it fresh water each day so just not don't put very cold water on it and make sure it is in the in the sun or um, like on top of a, um, uh, a not a heater but yeah on a on a warm spot um, and then for five days so make sure it is fresh water every day and then after that um, you know you might already see something sprouting um, and then after that you put it in soil. So I put it in the same bowl, but then just um, put soil all around it and covered it with soil. Um, and the soil that I have is especially for uh, seedlings. So um, there is something in the soil that encourages uh, root production and stuff. So you might want to look into that. Um, and then I covered it with plastic. Um, uh, stabbed a few holes in there and make sure that it was uh, just um, moisturized. <laughs> uh, like, uh, like maybe damp. Yeah, make sure that the, the soil didn't dry out. And then after, I don't know, maybe a week, a couple days, uh, maybe a week, yeah, uh, you could really see a root growing and I think I filmed that on my Instagram stories. So the root is here and um, so in the previous container the seed was horizontal and now I've placed it with the uh, sprouting bit up <laughs> and the root down. Uh, so yeah, I hope that I did a good job. And I actually have another mango seed now, so I'm going to uh, see if if I can be successful again a second time. So yeah, I thought this was cool. Um, and because uh, when I planted my avocado, um, 
this is not Steve, but my first avocado plant was called Steve, and uh, yeah, a lot of you were a fan of him. Uh, so uh, Steve didn't make it, but this is Steve 2.0, or uh, Viola, as I call her. <laughs> Um, so yeah, when I when I initially initially planted Steve, uh, I used to document it on my Instagram stories, and quite a few of you liked it. So I thought, now with this mango seed journey, that I might do the same, or that I might give you guys um, give you a little update on it. So yes, that's what that was my plant talk. I hope you liked it. Um, yeah, usually I talk about what kind of shows I've been watching, but I've, I don't think I've watched TV at all. Again, we've been playing a lot of video games. Uh, for the past two weeks, we have been uh, playing Age of Empires. <laughs> yes, I'm all about the nostalgic video games. Do let me know uh, any other games I might like uh, or any other games that you liked when you were a kid. So uh, yeah, that was it for me for this episode. I do hope you all are well. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, I hope you have a fun crochet or knitting or otherwise crafty project. Um, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye!